All right, we are over 30 now, Mark. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get going here. Welcome everyone to another installment of our Lunch and Learn webinar series here at Nebra. Everyone should be muted as you join the webinar and I ask you to remain on mute until the end of the presentation when I should be able to open it up for questions. Uh, there's also a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and a chat if you want to type in questions or comments as they come to you, please do so and I'll be monitoring that. Um, this session is being recorded and the link to the recording and the slide deck will be provided to everyone who registered and it will be available on demand to NEBRA members who are unable to attend today. So thank you for joining us to learn about gasification for biosolids from NEBRA member Aries Clean Technologies. As you will hear, Aries will be starting up a regional biosolids processing facility in New Jersey, and they propose a similar facility for Taunton, Mass. And I'm so pleased to have Mark Lyons, Aries Director of Business Development for the New England region, here with us today. He is likely a very familiar face to a lot of you as he's been in the organics and waste management business for a long time. He's got 30 years of experience with renewable energy from waste, recycling, and environmental services industries. He successfully managed several facility development projects involving waste fired power plants and sanitary landfill expansions on the East Coast. And he has extensive business development, sales, government affairs, community relations, and environmental permitting experience. And prior to joining Aries, Mark led the Central New England Division of Casella Organics, where he managed over 350,000 tons per year of organic waste. He's also worked for waste management, Wheelabrator, that goes back a ways, uh, Browning Ferris Industries, and the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection for a short stint. He has a BA in Environmental Science from Colby College, an MS in Environmental Engineering from Tufts University, and an MBA from Franklin Pierce University. And I know I sound like a broken record, but the absolute best thing about Nebra is our members. You all do challenging and interesting work, and you're always willing to share your knowledge to benefit other Nebra members and the biosolids and residuals management profession in general. And with that, I would like to have Mark take it away. We are very excited to hear about your process and your new projects. Thanks, Janine. Uh, can I share my screen yet? You can, I will stop sharing and... Okay. Thank you for the press release, by the way. Thanks for... Um, you should be my, I need you as my press officer. Um, All right, we see your presentation. Try to get this working. All right, trying to get this working. There we go. Hopefully everybody can see it. Thank you all for attending. It's nice to be here. Uh, I've uh, had a relationship with Niebuhr now for a couple of years. Uh, great organization and you do good work, Janine, so keep it up. Um, I'll give you a quick summary of what I'm gonna talk about. I'll give you an overview of Aries Clean Technologies. Uh, we'll talk about our technology a little bit. Uh, we'll discuss the production of the biochar beneficial use product that our technology generates. Uh, talk about some current projects and then hopefully there'll be plenty of time for questions. Um, we'll do the company overview. Aries is based in Natural Tennessee area. Uh, you're, we are you're breaking up. A, we manufacture sorry, some of our own. You're okay. breaking up a little bit, Mark. Um, sorry. You know uh, what? You might want to shut your you shut your camera off. It's saying shut that your camera you're, off. Yeah, give that your a network try. bandwidth is low. Sorry. But now you muted yourself. Okay. Yep, you're muted. All right, good job with the camera. Now you just gotta unmute. How's that? <laughs> there we go, very good. Yeah, I can run a gasification plant, but not my computer, so. <laughs> I get you. All right, this <laughs> um, will make for a better experience for everyone, thanks, Mark. All right, can you hear me better now? Yes. All right, good. <laughs> Aries is, uh, as I said, we're based outside the Nashville, Tennessee area. Uh, 
we actually uh, make our own gasification equipment and then we uh, integrate equipment and technology from other uh, manufacturers and providers. Um, we, uh, we make uh, both fluidized bed and downdraft gasification systems for municipal and industrial customers. Uh, we gasify organic materials, biosolids, wood waste, other organic waste. And uh, what we like about our technology is that uh, we think it's a true beneficial use technology. We reduce biosolids, for example, by 95%. Um, we can help avoid land application and, and incineration of biosolids, although I have no problem with either technology. I'm actually an old incinerator guy from way back. But uh, as I think you all know, a lot of environmental groups and some regulatory agencies don't like incineration very much. So uh, we're, we offer an alternative. Um, and we, we believe we're a solution to the PFAS problem in biosolids, which I'll talk about later. Um, we're a carbon neutral and negative technology. Our facilities are located near the points of generation. So we reduce biosolids hauling costs. We produce heat energy and can produce electric energy if we choose. Um, the gasifier produces a producer gas, which gas, which we'll talk about in a minute. And uh, we, uh, we do produce a beneficial biochar, which has a number of applications. So my screen is not advancing, unfortunately. There we go. We have a New England development team for projects in New England. I'm the director of business development for New England, as Janine mentioned. Uh, I rely on support from our corporate office. Uh, including Brandon Davis, who's in our engineering group, and our Matt Newman, our lead operator, our director of operations. Uh, we have a construction manager, a finance manager, and um, I also have permitting support and accounting and marketing and PR support from corporate. And the senior executive team of Aries is uh, Greg Bafalas, is the CEO. He's got a lot of experience. He, he worked for Wheelerator back in the day and is work with some large power companies and some startups. Uh, Mark Witz, our CFO, and Renus Kelkins is our uh, Senior VP of Engineering. He has a lot of gasification experience. And then depending on where our project's located, we'll use uh, environmental attorneys, a commercial real estate firm to help us locate sites, permitting consultants, of course, and, uh, we, need, and we have civil engineering support. So this is a uh, simplified process flow diagram of how our facilities work. Uh, we have a biosolids receiving hall, which uh, in the case of Taunton, and uh, mo most of our facilities will be totally enclosed under negative air pressure to prevent odor issues. We'll have a biosolid storage uh, bin or tank, usually several of them. In the case of the Taunton project, we're planning to have three uh, biosolids dryers. Right now, we're planning on rotary drum, drum dryers, but we're also uh, taking a close look at fluidized bed dryers. Uh, that may be uh, the way we go, but we haven't decided yet. Um, the biosolids come in in the form of cake, typically 20% solids on average. We dry them. We have a, we will, we'll, probably operate two dryers simultaneously and keep one in reserve for when one goes down, either due to scheduled or unscheduled maintenance. Um, dry the biosolids to 90% solids into the gasifier, they'll go. Um, gasifier runs at about uh, 1200, 1250 degrees Fahrenheit, produces a uh, syngas, which is uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the solids are removed with a cyclone and then the syngas goes to a thermal oxidizer. Thermal oxidizer is going to run at about 1800 to 800, 1850 degrees Fahrenheit where we'll destroy odors and VOCs and most of the PFAS. Uh, the biochar will be removed and that goes into a holding bin or a storage silo. The, um, uh, we may, uh, the, 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 Heat from the gas then goes through a heat recovery exchanger and an emission control device. Uh, we have a recirculating loop and the heat from the thermal oxidizer goes to the dryers and that's the source of the energy to dry the biosolids. We'll use natural gas to start up the dryers but once we reach 
uh, steady state operations and operating temperatures, uh, we shut off the gas and the, the process is self-sustaining. Um, we may have what's called an organic Rankin cycle uh, power system that'll allow us to produce a small amount of electricity. We haven't decided on the yet, but that's something we're seriously considering. So the, the fluidized, fluidized bed gasifier works uh, in, in this way, uh, it converts the biosolids or biomass into a synthesis or syngas. Uh, it's not incineration. It's a thermochemical process. We're converting the chemical energy in the biosolids into heat energy in the gasifier. The um, bed temperature is a constant 1250 degrees F and we strictly control the air to biosolids ratio. So there's no combustion, there's no flame. The reaction is self-sustaining. Producer gas is primarily hydrogen and methane with some CO and that should say CO2, sorry about that. I just caught that typo. Um, and as I said earlier, the process doesn't require supplemental heat other than during startup. And on the right-hand side of the slide, you can see a cutaway of the gasifier. Um, I, as I, I think I already said the fluidized bed is comprised of sand um, and uh, no combustion occurs whatsoever inside the vessel. We also have a thermal oxidizer. It, it produces the heat we need for the biosolids dryers and also uh, conveniently destroys uh, a lot of the organics or most of the organics in the uh, syngas. It operates at a temperature of 850 degrees F. It's a ref refractory line steel vessel, which blends the producer gas with air, combusts the gas to generate the heat we need and remove the pollutants. And uh, as I said, this, this, unit also, this unit produces the, the heat we need uh, to run the dryers. So we think this uh, oxidizer also is going to be a very effective uh, PFAS destruction unit. Um, our studies have shown that biosolids in New England are expected to have an average PFAS concentration of around 100 parts per billion. Of course, the actual PFAS concentrations in biosolids can be higher and, and many are lower. We believe the TO will destroy 99.99% of the PFAS compounds in the biosolids. Um, and we believe this for a number of reasons. Testing of a thermal oxidizer at a Chemours chemical facility in New North Carolina confirmed a PFAS destruction, uh, a PFAS compound destruction removal efficiency of 99.992% to 99.9998%. Um, and the PFAS entering the Aries thermal oxidizer will be in the syngas, which we ex exposed, to, exposed to flame temperatures in excess of 1800 degrees F for over one second residence time. And the uh, thermal oxidizer at the Comores facility had a very similar design or has a very similar design. Also stack and biochar testing at a demonstrations biosolids gasification plant in Australia showed a PFAS destruction removal efficiency of 94% in the thermal oxidizer. However, that TO has a lower operating temperature than the Aries TO will. And that test also showed no detectable PFAS in the biochar. Also, we've run a uh, pilot test uh, on auto shredder waste that contains PFAS, and that study showed no detectable PFAS in the biochar. And our Aries facility, which in Linden, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, and we're gonna reach, be reaching mechanical completion on that plant in a week or two. Uh, when that facility enters into commercial operations, we're gonna do ex extensive PFAS air and biochar testing uh, to prove that uh, this technology is effective at destroying PFAS. The Aries plants also have extensive air uh, emissions control systems. Uh, we're going to have what's called a trimer unit, uh, which will remove NOx, SOx, particulate matter. The trimer unit will also have a selective catalytic reduction system using aqueous ammonia, ammonia that'll uh, control NOx. And SOx will control by introducing hydrated lime. And uh, the trimer unit also has a ceramic filtration system in the bag house or in the, in the unit, which uh, will, will remove particulate matter. We expect greater than 90% NOx removal and 
SOX removal, 99% particulate matter removal, and 98% uh, hazardous air pollutant removal, for example, mercury. And then once the gas is passed through the emission control system, it will be vented to an exhaust stack. And the height of the stack varies project to project. Uh, the height is determined uh, using good engineering practice and the, and the results of uh, air dispersion modeling. So we think uh, gasification has a lot of benefits. Um, we, uh, we're gonna divert about 150 to 160,000 tons of biosolids from incinerators and landfills every year. Uh, these, tech, these projects have between 20 and 25 new full-time jobs, plus 100 to 150 construction jobs. And uh, you know the, the, the operators at our facilities are pretty well paid. Um, we're going to generate renewable thermal and probably solar energy on site. Most of our projects will have solar panels. And as you said earlier, some of our projects may have uh, an organic rank and cycle system that will produce electric energy. We expect to reduce truck traffic from hauling biosolids to long distance landfills and other, other land application sites and the associated emissions from truck hauling by up to 75%. Our facilities are a minor air source. We're gonna use backed and enhanced odor control. Uh, gasification captures fugitive methane that would otherwise be generated from biosolids disposal. We think we're a net negative greenhouse gas facility according to our calculations. We have a high PFAS destruction removal efficiency. And um, the EPA has determined that Aries, the Aries gasification technology is not incineration. And uh, back in 2013, the EPA actually issued a letter uh, to our predecessor company uh, concluding that fluidized bed gasification and the thermal oxidizer together are not uh, considered a sewage sludge incinerator. We're not regulated under the SSI rules. And um, the New Jersey DEP issued an air permit for Aries Linden in late 2019, and we were permitted as a gasification facility, not an incineration facility. I'm gonna talk about the biochar we produce a little bit. Um, biochar, as you probably know, is a manufactured product that is formed in a low oxygen environment. It has, it has uh, pretty high carbon content. During the gasification process, the carbon and ash in the biosolids resist thermal degradation. And the resulting biochar can hold that carbon for thousands of years when applied as an industrial material. We're actually using uh, the biochar from our wood gasifier in Lebanon, Tennessee um, uh, uh, in, uh, as an agricultural product. And the uh, biochar we're gonna produce at our other projects where we're gasifying biosolids um, is going to be used as a fly ash substitute in uh, concrete mixes. And it's inert and non-hazardous and the testing we've done so far shows that there's virtually no PFAS in the biochar. So we are uh, working on a, um, we're working on a facility in um, Linden, New Jersey. It's got 430 ton per day uh, throughput. It's using two Baker Roman rotary drum dryers. Um, the gasifier has a capacity of 85 tons per day. We're gonna produce about 22 tons per day of biochar. Uh, we received, uh, we achieved financial close in, uh, I think it was late 2019. Plants currently under construction. Uh, we received all the operating permits we need from the New Jersey DEP. We financed the facility through tax exempt private activity bonds. About $50 million worth of bonds were sold and we financed it through the Union County Improvement Authority. The, the biosolids feedstock for the plant is fully contracted. We're gonna have two sources of biosolid supply. One will come from a company called RMB Debris, uh, which is in the sludge management business in New Jersey. And the uh, Lyndon Roselle Sewer Authority is going to provide 125 tons per day of uh, liquid biosolids, which we will dewater uh, and then dry and gasify. We're going to sell the biochar to a local concrete company as a fly ash substitute. 
and we've got a letter of intent in place to sell the Class A biosolids that the dryer produces uh, to a soils remediation company. So our plan is when uh, the gasifier may be down for maintenance, uh, we can still process biosolids, dry them, and uh, market them as a Class A biosolids. So we're expecting mechanical completion at the end of next week. May run into early October a few days, but it's it's looking like within the next week or so, uh, mechanical uh, completion will be achieved. And then we hope to achieve commercial operations late December of this year. And uh, this is a picture of the plant um, that under construction, it was taken, uh, I think a week or two ago. Um, you can see uh, the side view, the, uh, the, the, Lit the vessel labeled uh, one is the tower for the spent sorbent. That's the uh, the hydrated lime and uh, and uh, carbon material, particulate material that we will uh, be collecting in the primary air emissions control unit. The area of the plant labeled two is the low temperature heat exchange. Uh, that module you see uh, labeled number three is the selective catalytic reduction system. I said we're going to use, as I said, we're going to use aqueous ammonia, ammonia and a catalyst to remove NOx. And uh, the large blue unit labeled four is the, uh, the primer unit, which contains the filters uh, and the catalyst for the NOx removal system. You can see the sorbet tank to the right, which, will, which holds the hydrated lime. And then six, the large pipe you see is the, uh, it's the duct con connecting the high temperature heat exchanger with the trimer emissions module. These are some older photos that uh, show the construction of the Aries Linden facility. The photo in the upper left-hand corner is the trimer emissions control unit being installed. You can see one of the modules being set in place. The uh, upper row to the next one to the right is the gasifier being installed. It's being set in place with a crane. Then the, the middle photo, I guess, in the upper row, that's the that's one of the heat exchangers. And then you can see the to the right on the upper row, you can see the heat exchanger from another angle with the uh, thermal oxidizer in the background. The photo on the uh, lower uh, left-hand corner is the gasifier bottom with the air duct. Uh, and then the gasifier bottom is shown in another view uh, next to the next to that photo. And then the uh, third photo to the left, you can see the top half of the thermal oxidizer being uh, set into place. And then you can see the two uh, baker Roman rotary drum dryers being set in place in the uh, lower right-hand corner. And as Janine mentioned, we're also proposing a project in Taunton. Um, it's gonna be located at the Close City Landfill. We use a very similar basis of design to Linden. We've executed site option and host community agreements with the city. We've negotiated a feedstock supply agreement with a company who will be supplying biosolids to us. We're also gonna reserve some capacity in this facility for the city of Taunton biosolids. Uh, we're currently in the MEPA process, preparing a draft environmental impact report for the project. And uh, if all goes well, we hope to achieve financial close on this facility in late Q3 of 2022 with 12 to 15 months of construction and commissioning. Right now we're planning to have three uh, rotary drum dryers, uh, but that may change. As I said earlier, we're looking at possibly using fluidized bed dryers. Um, we'll have a fluidized bed gasifier. The capacity will be 470 tons per day of biosolids cake. Uh, the gasifier will have a thermal output of about 36 million BTUs per hour, and we're gonna produce about 25 tons of biochar per day. And you can see some renderings that, that show what the facility will look like uh, uh, next to the Taunton landfill. Very tight site there. We had to do a lot of creative engineering to make it fit, but uh, we will make it fit and um, uh, we're gonna make that site work. This shows a layout of the facility in Taunton next to the landfill. You can see the, the gray shared area in the upper part of the the uh, site plan shows the landfill. Um, and uh, like I said, it's gonna be a tight squeeze, but we've, 
we've uh, we can make all the logistics work uh, that we place for trucks to queue and we won't interfere with any truck traffic uh, on the surrounding streets so um, city's uh, very supportive of the project and uh, we are moving ahead that shows you another rendering of the Taunton facility in front of the landfill you can see the uh, the street in front is uh, East Britannia Street uh, in the city. Um, we're also proposing a project at the Middlesex County uh, Utilities Authority uh, wastewater treatment plant. We responded to an RFQ for a gasification facility in February, and we were selected uh, as a pre-qualified company to be shortlisted for the RFP. One of my colleagues, uh, Joel Thornton, I believe, is on the uh, on the call and. He can talk a lot more about this project as he's managing it for us. Um, it's going to be a public-private partnership with MCUA. All the feedstock will come from MCUA initially, uh, but um, they're planning to install a digestion system so some of their volume may decline and we'll fill that uh, newly created capacity with merchant biosolids. Um, and then the development time, once the site and the feedstock agreements are in place, will be nine to 12 months. And so the next 60 to 90 days, we're uh, going to complete our proposal, submit it to MCUA. Um, I actually, I guess, uh, I guess our proposal was submitted at the end of August. Um, and Joel can uh, clarify that if, uh, if he's on the call and, and has the ability. Um, we're going to, the winning respondent's going to be selected in the next couple of weeks. And uh, we hope we're going to be the selected respondent. And if so, we'll negotiate a public private partnership agreement with the MC, with MCUA. It's going to be a 500 ton per day uh, capacity plant with one fluidized bed gasifier. And similar to the gasifier in ton, it'll have a similar heat output and will produce about 25 tons per day of biosolids. Hey, hey Mark, I'm here too, by hey, the way. Joel. Um, yeah, just um, just to clarify that that uh, RFP got extended a month, so it's actually due next week. So I'm right in the process right now of actually printing it out and and all that. But that'll go in next week, and then the selection of the successful respondent will be sometime in uh, sometime in November, I would guess. Thanks, Joel. Um, appreciate the update. Well, that's all I have, Janine, and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, anyone may have. All right, Mark. You want, you want me to stop sharing my screen? No, you can leave that up. That's a very relaxing background. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we do have a couple of questions out of the shoot here. And if uh, Joel can answer some, I can promote him to a panelist, too, so he can speak. Uh, do you want to try turning your camera on now, Mark? Sure. Oh, how that goes. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to have Joel uh, be able to answer questions. He's a lot smarter than I am. So uh, I, it's good to have a Joel on your team. It really All right. is. I'm going to promote him to a panelist then so he can join us. And so the first question is regarding the airborne PFAS. Are, is the exhaust gas being tested for airborne PFAS, Mark? Yes, we're going to do that testing at Linden once uh, once Linden reaches commercial operations. Okay. And the, the studies I mentioned previously uh, uh, where thermal oxidizers were used to destroy PFAS, the, uh, the exhaust gas was tested to reach those destruction removal efficiency conclusions or results. Has, uh, is this the facility EPA was interested in doing testing with you too or? Yes. Okay, great. All right, we have another question uh, from Lisa Challenger. Has pilot testing been done to show the biosolids characteristics are within spec for the concrete? Um, I guess the biochar used in the concrete. Did the concrete yes. companies have to modify their existing operating permits to accept biosolids, biochar as a substitute for fly ash? Can you talk about that a little? I, I'm, that's not my area of expertise. Joel may know more, but I, I do know we, there has been some bio pilot testing done and we have a letter of intent with a, uh, I think we've got a letter of intent with a company. Joel, do you, can you elaborate on that a bit? 
Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, we have a letter of intent with a company, you're, you're right. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can say who it is or not, so I won't for now, but um, we do have a letter of intent. They've done some preliminary pilot testing on the on the biochar. They don't have to modify their um, existing operation. Um, I don't know about their permits, um, but I, I suspect not since it's not really biosolids that they'd be accepting at that point. I mean, it's, it's kind of ash and carbon at that point. So it's it's, it's just got about five or 10% more carbon than the fly ash they might normally use. Um, and so I don't think they would have to modify their permits if I was to guess, but I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Um, and then, but when we, when we do start producing um, a commercial quantity, we're going to have to do a much more expanded um, testing, uh, testing procedures to kind of verify the, the characteristics of the bio biochar. Sure, I'm sh I'm sure. Um, let me just get, get one of these questions from the chat um, before I forget. How much of the incoming sludge feed stock is converted to Class A versus biochar? A rough estimate, do you? Well, it's all converted to Class A, and then it is fed to the gasifier. So and is all, the four, all 470 tons. Uh, of input is converted into um, is, is converted into Class A, and then from there the Class A product is fed to the gasifier. Gotcha. And as a backup, when you're doing maintenance, that that dried Class A material has another outlet. Right. Correct. But the intent right. would be to to gasify all of it. If for the Taunton project, we have a, an, an arrangement or an agreement with a company. Uh, uh, to manage that Class A for us uh, during uh, certain times when the gasifier is down for scheduled or unscheduled maintenance. There but our intent here is to process as much of that Class A as we can or gasify as much of that Class A as we can to produce biochar. Because I, as I think everyone on the call knows, it's, uh, finding it's, it's getting increasingly difficult to find homes for Class A in Massachusetts. Yes. Some folks are painfully aware. <clears throat> um, another question was, are you going to sell the biochar? Is there any going to be any value huh, per ton? Probably. Oh, are we going to sell the biochar? Absolutely. Okay. There is a value. And do you and, know and, what that is yet? Um, I'm not at liberty to say. Okay. But there is a, there is a value. Uh, okay. I think it, the reason that concrete companies are interested in the biochar is because, uh, as you probably know, coal fly ash is used in a lot, of, a lot of concrete mixes because it prevents what's known as alkali silicate reactions, which causes uh, the concrete structural integrity to degrade. Um, and coal fly ash is getting increasingly hard to find because coal plants, coal power plants are being shut down all over the country. So the biochar has value. Yeah, and if I could just jump in as well, I see the question there asking about the high cost of woody biochar um, as an impediment. Um, the, the cost of this biochar, while we can't say exactly what that number is, it, it's significantly less than what typically woody biochar might sell for. Fair enough. Um, so I do have someone with their hand raised before I get too far. There's a lot of questions, Mark, so this is very exciting. But who is calling from the 707 area code? I will unmute you to ask you a question. And you, you all might need to unmute yourself. I'll ask you to unmute. And in the meantime, let's, uh, let's see what we have for other questions. Let's go back to our questions here. All right. Did this, we didn't answer this one, but what is the cost? Do you have a cost to process the material per wet ton? We're gonna cost. Everyone wants to talk about costs. So well, I, I'll 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 be happy to share the tip fee we plan to charge, and it's going to be somewhere in the mid seventies uh, to high seventies. Uh, that's twenty twenty three numbers. That's the price when we start up the facility. Twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four dollars. And obviously, that's designed to cover your costs. So I think that answers that. Question. All right, you know, cost plus a profit. You know, and we're gonna uh, right. We're going to finance these projects, so we'll, we'll have debt service. So, sure. yeah, that's to cover all of our costs and to, and to make a profit because, we, you know, this is America. And 
Yep. We need to make a profit to stay in business. <laughs> understood. Understood. Um, here's somebody asking if you have any of the PFAS research papers that can be reviewed and whether the EPA PIT team evaluated your system. I probably can help with some of that, but um, maybe if you, if you have anything, Mark, that comes to mind, if you could share it with me, I could probably sure. um, yeah, I've got share the, it um, after though. We've got the, uh, we have copies of the reports or, or the studies that I mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation. The, oh. the Comores yeah. facility in North Carolina, the, the Australian pilot gasification facility, um, and the, uh, the, the pilot test that we did on the Otter Shredder resident. All right. So I will follow up and get that, maybe some information to share after the fact. Uh, Here's a quick question for the Linden facility. You mentioned mechanical completion is close. Um, how long to get through completion and then start testing around the PFAS work? Is that the end of the year? Is that well, we're not going to test for PFAS until you know we're we're commercially we operating and, and and in steady state operations, and sure. we're confident we're not going to have any hiccups. But so I would say probably early in 2022 is when we'll do the PFAS testing. All right. Thanks. Mark. Um, all right. So I think we already answered this question about the high cost of woody biochar. I think Joel got that one. Um, here's a good one. What kinds, what kind of lessons learned from your previous biosolids projects have you have informed your newer generation technology development? That's that very thought provoking. That, I know who asked the question and he's a thought provoker. <laughs> okay. Well, that is a good question. Um, I can share a couple of uh, lessons learned. One, never try to shoehorn a new facility in an existing building, which is what <laughs> we did in Linden. It caused a lot of problems. Um, I think the other thing is um, make sure you have plenty of contingency baked into your cost. And then maybe a third is I think on all our future projects, we're going to use uh, an, EP an EPC contractor with a lump sum not to exceed price. And that EPC contractor is going to be responsible for everything, engineering, procurement, construction. Uh, and as I said, we'll have a lump sum not to exceed price, so we won't have any cost surprises. Um, and, 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 and with a contract that has strict you know, deadlines and penalties for not meeting uh, milestones and target dates. So I guess uh, I suspect that was a painful, a painful lesson. I that's so that's what I have to offer. Joel, you may have some additional insights. No, I think you covered the big one. I think the building is the biggest one. I mean we had we had quite we used an existing building that used to hold a dewatering system in it. Um, and just trying to shoe on something into a building is just never a good idea. So we, uh, we just look for greenfield sites now and uh, anything in the future, we'll be building our own fit for purpose. Uh, another person was asking, uh, they found it interesting that your end use for the biochar is going to cement, but had you looked at other outlets, Mark? Um, we are looking at other outlets, but the cement one, Seem to be the best. Seems to be the best fit right now because uh, of the need of these uh, concrete companies to find new sources of carbon, new new sources of fly ash, because uh, it's getting increasingly hard to find. Yeah, no, I, I've had some conversations with um, with a group from South Africa who's looking at biochar as a, um, as an addition to asphalt. So um, there's a couple of different um, construction type material applications that we've been looking into. Um, but again, I think once we you know start producing commercial quantities and we can send samples out to different vendors and things like that, I think their market should start you know um, opening up to different options. But right now without having a quantity to, you know that we can send to people to test in their processes and things it's kind of difficult but yeah we, we hope we hope to kind of start doing that you know in the next uh three or four months very good um chloe's asking if you can explain what the gas gasifier thermal output listed for each project means 
Joel, I'll let you tackle that one. I can talk <laughs> about it in broad terms, but uh, but Joel's the real engineer. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're meaning the thermal output that was listed on the slides, it's basically the amount of thermal energy in the syngas that's generated from the gasifier. So there is a there is a conversion efficiency of the um, thermal sort of heating value in the biosolids that is then converted into the syngas, and the, uh, the 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 heating or the thermal energy listed there is the actual thermal energy available in the syngas once it once it passes through the thermal oxidizer. Okay, I think that answers that one. Uh Again, whoever's calling from the 707 area code, I believe I have you unmuted now and you had your hand raised if you wanted to ask your question. Yeah, thanks, Jean. I was wondering what's the minimum uh, capacity size plants that this technology can perform down to? What's the smallest size plant? It, it, it's the limited uh, capacity, 430 tons per day. Uh, the gasifier uh, is 100 tons per day, and that's really the smallest capacity gasifier that we can uh, run economically. We have smaller gasifiers for wood, um, but um, uh, I think for, for biosolids, the smallest gasifier that will make sense financially is 100 tons per day. Is that, is that right, Joel? That mean it's Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, and does that mean that that's got to be a consistent or uh, how sensitive is it to, you know, maybe days you take in only 80 tons and other days you take in 120 or is that a floating average or is it pretty hard, a hard minimum? We're going to, we're going to run it right at about 100 tons per day. You know, we can, we can go above that a little bit, maybe 110 tons per day, but it doesn't operate well when you start to, um, uh, turn it down. So, um, and we're going to have storage capacity on site. So we're obviously we're going to receive different quantities of biosolids each day, but uh, we'll have storage on site storage capacity. So, you know, that will be essentially, uh, you know, uh, that will equalize the feed to the dryers and to the gasifier. So we're going to run it right around 110 tons per day. All right. Thanks. Are, are you with are you disqualifying any forms of biosolids? It's like I'm thinking lime stabilized or uh, subclass B material or are all biosolids eligible for your technology? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. We've got specs in our feedstock supply contracts. Um, and I think a, you know, a biosolid that has a lot of lime in it, we wouldn't want it. Uh, just doesn't have, won't have a lot of energy value. Uh, we're gonna we're able to take somewhere between 16 and 17 percent solids content, biosolids from municipal wastewater treatment plants up to I don't know something in the mid to high 20s. Uh, but we're 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 trying to you know uh, achieve a blend or a mix of biosolids around 20 percent solids by weight. So anything you want to add, Joel? Uh, that that's a pretty good answer um, for that for that question. Um, I mean, there, there is it, it, it is somewhat dependent on where the location of the facility as well as to what kind of biosolids are um, we we would we would accept or what we could permit or you know those types of those types of issues. But um, yeah, typically we'll we'll have like Mark said, we'll have that spec in the um, supply agreement, and and the, it, it's pretty forgiving the gas but we are um so i mean it can take it, it, it from a technical perspective it's pretty forgiving on on what type of biosolids it can accept but there's certain um certain biosolids that we we sort of target for our facilities and right. Joel, and final while we question. go ahead jim sorry is the technology actually destroying the PFOS or is it just transforming it or converting it into other forms of maybe shorter chain uh, elements, or do you know what's actually happening to the long chain PFAS? Well, that's above my pay grade, but uh, based uh, uh, my, our consultants, based on the Comores testing and the uh, the um, the testing in Australia, 
uh, and their knowledge of uh, chemistry, they're, they're telling us it's a true destruction of, of both short chain and long chain PFAS. All right, thanks so again, I'll get these. So we're, test, we're testing the, we're testing the, bio, the incoming PFAS in the syngas, we're testing the PFAS in the exhaust gas, and we're testing the PFAS in the biochar. And again, Jim, I just muted you to move on to other questions, but I'm gonna snag some of those research studies from Mark and, and share them with the group. Uh, so another engineering question, Joel. Well, we have you. You mentioned considering transition from rotary drum, or Mark did, rotary drum drying to fluid bed drying. Uh, can you elaborate on some of the factors that are making that change attractive? Yeah, right now the um, the change is driven by cost mainly. So um, it's op operating cost versus capital cost. Um, so we're kind of assessing whether a, a, a larger capital outlay is worth it um, to, to, to cut back on some of the operating costs. So we're doing an assessment and actually not just on fluid bed, we're actually looking at a few other types of dryers. We, we have had some experience in the past, um, you know, with, with other types that it didn't, didn't seem to, um, didn't seem to work very well with our technology. So really the two main ones are the, the rotary drums and the fluid bed, but yeah, it really does go back to cost at the end of the day. Fair enough. Uh, another engineering type question, Joel, where, where does the process water condensate from the dryers go? Uh, we send that right back to the uh, treatment plant. So it just goes back to the sewer line just for treatment in the, in the headworks of the treatment plant. So are all of your facilities adjacent to treatment facilities for uh, the most they, part? We, we try to if we can, but they're not all adjacent to a treatment plant. So if they're not, uh, like for the Linden facility is on a treatment plant, obviously. So we tie directly back to the headworks of the treatment plant. But if not, then we'll just tie into the the, uh, the, the, the collection plant. system. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. For Tong, for example, there's a sewer line right at the landfill, which accepts the landfill leachate. So we're going to tie into that line. Okay. Um, I think you answered this question, but is the biochar produced regulated as class A EQ biosolids? No. Not really. No, it's not. It's a different no. product. Yep. Right. Okay. That's right. That's right. Um, and again, I think you might have answered this too, but what's the scope of the PFAS testing that you have planned at the new Linden facility? It sounded like. Well, Joel biochar. can elaborate. He may know more than I do, but we're going to do, you know, extensive PFAS tests. And we're going to test the, uh, the PFAS and the syngas coming into the thermal oxidizer. We're going to test the exhaust gas for PFAS. We're going to test the biosolids for PFAS. We're going to test the biochar for PFAS. Yep. Yep. You covered it. Okay. Um, here's a, what agronomic crops is the biochar applied to that you produce from your Tennessee facility? So, so I'll let you handle that one. You're familiar yeah. with, more familiar with the Tennessee wood gasifier than I am. Yeah, no problem. So the the um, the uh, the wood gasifier biochar that we're generating in Tennessee right now is actually sold on on Amazon um, as a, just a home soil conditioner. So I, I added it to my garden at home. Um, so you can you can pretty much add it on on. Um, you know any any garden or crops it's not it's not it's uh certified by the ibi um at, you know as as uh biochar allowed to use on um on any sort of uh for any sort of fertilizer type situation um but right now actually the majority we have a supply agreement with a textiles manufacturer where we're supplying that biochar so majority of the biochar generated from the tennessee facility right now is actually sent um, to, to, to fulfill this supply agreement. Um, I can't give too many other details than that, um, but yeah, it, okay. it's a textile manufacturer who's using it as an input for their, um, for their process. Um, and then the, we use some of the, so we have to, as part of that agreement, we have to, um, we have to screen to a certain size to fulfill the agreement. And so the overs and the unders we, we use as, a, as, a, um, as the uh, agricultural kind of supplement that we sell online. Great, hang on, I'm just gonna check the chat now. Um, oh, here's a good question. Um, what, what are the benefits of gasification over pyrolysis? 
which we're going to learn about next month too. But um, in your opinion, I, Mark, I don't like uh, casting aspersions on other companies' technologies. All right, fair enough. We, we uh, you know, we know gas. Classification, that's our technology. We think it offers advantages to uh, some advantages to landfilling and and uh, sludge incineration, maybe land application if you're concerned about PFAS, but uh, I think I'll pass on the paralysis question. Okay. Uh, uh, and and is the, uh, you were talking about throughput 100 tons of dewatered biosolids. Is that wet tons or dry tons you're talking? Well, we're gonna we're gonna take in you know 450 tons of cake at an average 20% solids by weight. We'll dry that to 90% solids by weight, and then those dried biosolids will be fed to the gasifier. All right. Um, here's a good one. Will the facility be able to accept unstabilized solids, or does it need to meet Class B? No, it does not need to be, it does not need to meet class B. Very good. Um, do you have any other reference facilities that are operating with the same technology at a similar scale? No, we have the, um, are... um, we have the uh, 30, 35 ton per day wood gas fire in Lebanon. Uh, we ran a, essentially a demonstration project for biosolids in Sanford, Florida, but that facility was closed and dismantled and some of that equipment actually went to Lebanon. So Linden will be our first biosolids gasification facility using the fluidized bed system at that scale uh, and, and be commercial. Thank you, Mark. Uh, here's another uh, probably Joel question. Has the condensate been tested for PFAS prior to sending it back to for treatment? Well, we're not making any condensate right now, um, but uh, I didn't. I, I should have mentioned that we'll be testing the condensate in Linden too. Okay. All right. Uh, somebody, I don't know if you can answer this one, but somebody's asking what lab is doing the air testing for PFAS. I, I don't think we've even selected the lab yet. Very we may good. have, but I, I don't know. Joel, do you know? No, I don't. We, like you say, we might have, but I'd have to, I'd have to confirm with Ron. I'm not 100 percent sure if we've selected or not. That's a question Ron Hudson, our environmental permitting permitting manager, can answer. Okay. I think people are just looking for folks that have expertise in that area now. Everyone is interested in that type of testing. Right. Um, and then uh, Tom is asking. Maybe he missed it, but he'd appreciate commenting on the energy balance. I believe you did talk about a little bit about the carbon footprint. Um, uh, but will this be a net producer or user of energy? Um, well, I, I think you we're going to be a net, we're gonna be a net and... We're going to be a net producer because uh, we're going to use the the heat energy in the syngas to run the dryers. We're going to have solar panels and we're probably going to have an organic Rankin cycle uh, power production system. So we're going to be a net producer. Uh, although we are going to, we are going to buy electricity from the grid, right, Joel? Yeah, that's right. We are going to be producing in terms of actual net energy. We're going to be producing more than we're using. Terrific. Uh, someone's asking about your, uh, your employees creating these 25 permanent jobs in Linden. How many of those are for normal operation and maintenance of the facility? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Um, we're going to have two shifts. We're going to, uh, there'll obviously be more people working during the day than at night. We'll have maintenance yep. people there during the day doing routine yeah. maintenance. And then, you know, a skeletal crew of operators at night and then people to uh, uh, cover for other people while they're on vacation or out sick. Uh, Joel, do you have a sense of, uh, of what the breakdown is? Yeah, I was going to say, I actually tell you that number. Uh, oh, great. I knew there was a reason I asked you to be on this call. Smart. 
So about, about 15 of those 25 are operators, material handling assistants, general laborers, maintenance techs, those types of things, about 15 of the 25. Then on okay. the, you'll have a site lead, an operator, an operations manager, that type of stuff, uh, IT and accounting, that type of stuff. So about All right. That's, that answers that question. Thanks, Joel. Yep. All right. Let me just check again if there's any questions. How about... Anything you want to uh, ask NEBRA members or? I do. Oh, I think there, we've got them all. I do have a question. If there are any gen, uh, generators uh, on the call, any wastewater treatment plant operators, um, what are you paying for sludge disposal these days? Tip fee and trans. I'd like it broken down if it's possible. I mean, I have a pretty good idea, but. Uh, if, uh, yeah, if folks are willing to share, you can just pop that in the chat. I'm interested in, in that information as well. I mean, I've been following a few bids here and there, and the numbers are getting up there. But um, if anyone wants to supply that information, I'd be interested as well. Any more hands up? No, no more hands up. Well, I'm, I'll give them some time to post that information in the chat. Yep, we'll get a few of our members who will respond, which I appreciate. Uh, but I really want to take a few minutes here to thank Mark and Joel for joining us. Uh, this is a very interesting presentation and definitely a challenge uh, developing some of these new facilities. So good luck in Linden. Good luck in Taunton. Um, I know the Cape could use some help. Hang on, we got some, let me just make sure these are just your, all right. You got a few, Mark, we got a few answers there for you. Okay, great. But thank you everyone again for joining us today. We have one more session scheduled for this year. Uh, and we'll, we'll hear about pyrolysis for biosolids in October. So check our events page for that. And I'm always looking for suggestions for future topics. So please send me an email or call me if there's something in particular you want to lunch and learn about. I can make that happen. Hey, Janine, I'd like to mention one more thing, if I may. Absolutely. Um, and I should have mentioned this during my presentation. We are looking very seriously at a project in New Hampshire. Um, I can't tell you where it would be located yet, but we are... Um, we're, we're pursuing a project uh, in the Granite State, and um, hopefully we'll have more to uh, announce in the near future. But um, we uh, we hope to uh, we hope to have another project in New England, and uh, and uh, we're uh, well, obviously we're we're interested in customers. Um, this project will be on a rail siding if if we uh, if it does proceed. So. That'll give us some flexibility with flexibility with biosolids deliveries. Uh, well, but, good luck. Uh, I did want to mention that uh, we are looking at a, at a project in New Hampshire, so hopefully more to follow. All right. Good luck. Good luck with that, Aries. And uh, thank you again, everyone, for attending. You will get a copy of this recording and uh, the PowerPoint slides after next week. So look for that. And thanks again for joining us today. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, thanks, Janine. Thanks, I appreciate guys. the opportunity to uh, to talk to the, the group today. Very hot topic. Thank you. Thanks for presenting.